Welcome to the health stage. Um, we have a very, I think, interesting discussion starting here. Uh, uh, it, uh, I was actually positively surprised by how many discussions about diet or food is, is this year on, on the Opinion Festival. So um, I think you, you know already where did you came and, and what are we going to discuss. But, but shortly we are going to speak about uh, vegan and, and vegan diet. So um, maybe you have noticed, but in the last years there has been like really steamy discussion in Estonian media about vegan diet or is it healthy? Is it healthy in all ages or, or maybe it's very uh, um, kind of harmful diet, uh, especially in childhood. Uh, so uh, that's why vegan society, Estonian vegan society decided to, to make this discussion here and to invite four experts. But <laughs> as you can see, we have only three experts. I hope maybe one, one will come still because we are uh, just starting. But um, I, I think nevertheless, it will be a really interesting discussion also with, uh, uh, with these three experts. Uh, so we are going to discuss today uh, vegan diet. Is it a healthy diet or is it a harmful diet that can uh, probably leave, um, lead to death or something like that? So um, uh, how many of you, you can raise your hand, know what the vegan diet is? <laughs> so I, I think probably almost everybody. <laughs> So um, just shortly, it's a plant-based diet, which uh, excludes all the animal products from, from the diet. Um, and because you are all, all so knowledgeable, I'm not going to tell what vegans eat, because <laughs> I think you know them. And um, vegan diet is a very, like, gaining popularity in all over the world, also in Estonia. And it's estimated that uh, around 1% or less than 1% of Estonians are are, are leading a plant-based diet. And, and the same numbers are um, in other uh, European countries. For example, in UK, there was uh, last year a study that um, concluded that in the last decade, uh, the number of, uh, of vegans has been uh, risen about 360%. And it's also around 1% of, of the population. And um, also, if, if we talk about vegans, they are usually female, and they're usually young female, uh, around 15 to 35 years old. And, and um, I think, but here I, I see it's, it's quite <laughs> half and half, and also in the, in the panel we have uh, gender equality. So I think we can, we can start. So um, I think um, at the beginning, and, and one disclaimer also, uh, we are going to talk today here only about the diet, only about uh, eating uh, as vegan, plant-based diet, and we are not going so in details about the reasons why people um, start vegan diet. So, um, but still, if, if it comes up in the discussion, it's, it's welcome, so I'm not going to stop that. And, and also, if you have any questions, um, I'm happy to take them at the end of the discussion, but if you have anything very burning, then you can just raise your hand and, and there's somewhere is a microphone so you can, you can ask. So let's, let's start. And first, I'm, I'm going to introduce to you our panel, our experts. And I start from my right hand. It's my dear colleague, uh, Carmen Yoller. Uh, she is a family doctor, and, and she works in Tallinn. <laughs> so uh, on my left hand, first I have Dr. David Stenholz, uh, who is a senior um, consultant in oncology. That means he's a, like a cancer doctor, if, if it's easier to understand. And he's also a founder of a very interesting organization called Doctors for the Future. And I understand that the aim is to kind of raise uh, doctors' awareness about plant-based diet and what are the benefits of it. And also, if, uh, if you are interested, tomorrow in Tallinn, uh, Dr. David uh, is giving a lecture about plant-based diet, uh, all the benefits of it. And uh, if you have the time, you can, you can come and listen 
uh, all the information is available um, at the website vegan.e slash registrerimine. So you can find the place, the time, and, and you can come. There's a lot of places, so everybody is, is welcome. Um, and last but not least, we have a Professor Mikael Fogelholm, uh, who is working at Helsinki University, and he's a professor of, of uh, public health nutrition. <laughs> so um, he's uh, the most knowledge, uh, knowledgeable person here <laughs> about nutrition. So, um, and um, he is uh, he, has, uh, he has been involved also in the making of development of uh, Nordic nutrition recommendation and also Finland dietary rec recommendation. So, so I hope you will give us a lot of knowledge <laughs> today. So, um, and, and my name is Marta, uh, and I'm also a family doctor. Or I will be in a, in a, in a month or two, two weeks. And I'm going to moderate this discussion, as you already understood. So, um, at the beginning, I, I will like, open this topic with a little kind of this broad question. I would like to know, and I, I think it's interesting to you to also to know, what are your personal opinion about vegan diets? And Carmen, the floor is yours. I am maybe somewhat, somewhat a little bit uh, different from other Estonian doctors, and so I actually feel uh, in, in this aspect, I mean, and I, I, I'm so sorry that Dr. Einberg couldn't come here because... <laughs> yeah, <I'm sorry. laughs> Okay. Uh, in the, uh, when we were studying in the university, uh, our professors always uh, stressed very uh, strongly that uh, vegan diet is not very good diet, actually. That you never can uh, be a healthy vegan, but um, I had a background of Seventh-day Adventist, so uh, I had seen many vegans living healthily, happily for generations. Uh, I'm sure that um, at that time the knowledge was not enough, uh, so they didn't uh, take any food supplements. Uh, I think they actually should have taken. But um, I, and then I started to learn the facts, and I took uh, from the books library, library yes. <laughs> and many um, nutritional books, and uh, I read that actually uh, in certain uh, uh, certain condition it is possible. So uh, personally, I'm not a vegan, but I never. Uh, think that if a person has um, chosen a very knowledgeable veganism, uh, I think it's okay. But um, but of course, in certain conditions, it can be very harmful. So um, our fourth expert is arrived. So Dr. Einberg, I have a microphone for you. So um, can I? So uh, Dr. Ulla Einberg is a pediatrician. Um, she is specialized in endocrinology. I will not explain what it is, but if you understand, it's, it's good. And she's also a head of uh, Estonian uh, Pediatrician Society. And um, we started with this open question, like, how, if, what is your attitude or how do you think about or feel about vegan diet, just to open the topic? Yeah. Thank you very much. Uh, Yes, I am a pediatrician and I have worked for Italian Children's Hospital over 25 years and I, I am doctor with experience. And uh, I would like uh, to speak about children, not but adults. <laughs> and um, my opinion is that total vegan uh, diet should be avoided uh, for children because it poses the highest risk for nutrient deficiencies, particularly energy, protein, essential fatty acids, vitamin B12, vitamin D, iron, calcium, and zinc. It is um, my opinion. Mm -hmm. So we are going to discuss this um, in deep, uh, depth a little bit later, but yeah. what do you think about vegan in, in adult people? Um, if the supplementation is is good, it it may be sufficient. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, okay. the diet. Yeah. 
So let's go to the male part of the discussion and David, what is your opinion? Um, I'm uh, going to try to not to answer what anyone before has said, but just uh, give my own reflection uh, from scratch. Uh, I have a per uh, personally a very positive view of the vegan diets. It's um, uh, my view, uh, reviewing the existing evidence, it's not only uh, an adequate diet, it's um, a diet that uh, brings many health benefits uh, the general recommendations from all expert panels all over the world today is to eat more plant foods, that is uh, uh, legumes, whole grains, fruits, vegetables. And uh, that is, in my view, the direction we all need to go, no matter if we're vegans or omnivores or vegetarians. If we want to eat, uh, bring our diet in a more healthy direction, that is the way we want to go. So I wouldn't say that a vegan diet per se is always healthy, but uh, as a vegan you are excluding some, um, uh, um, um, you're automatically excluding some uh, um, foods that are definitely harmful to health, uh, like um, uh, cream, uh, cheese, uh, sources of saturated fat, trans fats, red meat and processed meats. So you, you have a very good starting point of making your diet very healthy. Uh, but there are some issues that you need to consider. Uh, there is, uh, I, I will mention it now when everyone is awake, that is B12. Uh, so if anyone of you here is vegan or considering a vegan diet, you need to take B12. Uh, that's, I think, the most important message I want to confer today. Um, yeah, or you can uh, drink, eat um, some fortified foods which contain, but you have to be sure that there actually is B12 in it, so. And Mikael? Yeah, um, maybe I'll start how I eat, because I think in a way that's, that's an interesting and important question. I'm not a vegan, I'm what you would call a flexitarian. Flexitarian <laughs> means that I prefer vegetarian food when it's easy, easily available. Uh, I do that at the university catering restaurant. Whenever I, I eat lunch there, I usually take the vegetarian choice. But I'm not totally uh, restricting my diet to, to vegetarian food. So I think most of my days I'm probably more or less lacto-vegetarian. I eat about, I once tried to count, I think I eat about 10 kilos meat per year. Um, an average Finn eats about 70 kilos. So it's not very much, but still I'm not restricting the diet. There was just a couple of months ago a pretty good review in, in, in European Journal of Nutrition on, on this issue. And it's really, many of the studies on vegan diets are in fact very old. They are from 1980s and 1990s. The general summary of the studies would be that there's very little, if any, evidence that the diets would be harmful. Most of the evidence uh, somehow indicates that, that they are beneficial. But as I said, the evidence is not very strong because the number of diets, uh, number of studies is very low. And in most of the studies, the number of subjects has been very, very low. The, the, maybe, maybe the biggest risks that the studies bring up are related to small children. And, and I would say that after year four, the benefits override the potential risks. There are risks with small children and that one should really take care of. Uh, they are risks that you can control and you can avoid them, but the risk really for small children are much bigger than, than for adults. Uh, and my final comment here would, would, would still be that, that, especially for adults, I would say that, that the the literature really shows that a vegan diet is one good option in having a good and healthy diet, which is also, from an environment of viewpoint, very good. But, again, if you look at health and environment, you don't have to restrict your diet to no meat. You can also have a little bit of meat, a little bit of fish. It doesn't harm your health, health and it's probably also compatible with the environmental 
issues. So, so it's one alternative of a handful of good diets in adults. But really, as I said, in children there are some some risks that we really need to take care of. We can handle them, but but it's not without good advice. So it, it, you say that we should just do more studies then? The problem in research here is that the number of vegans is still very low and 1% is not very much still and the number of vegan children would still be lower because I still think that many vegan families they would at least give a lacto-vegetarian or lacto-ovo vegetarian diet for, the, diet for their children. So in big population studies, we don't beat enough vegans to make any good conclusions. And then if we invite vegans to study, then you never know how selected this group, group is. But you're completely right. At this moment, I would say that what we would need uh, is good studies with small, very small children following a vegan diet from the day when, when they are weaned from, from uh, breastfeeding up to when they are four years. We still have too few of those studies to make very sure, very to be really sure about the, the safety issues. And and the, this, I, I mean, I'm now thinking of, of health outcomes. In theory, we can calculate the nutrient index, and that's, that's of course, easier. Does anyone want to comment on that? Does anybody has some other studies or some other knowledge? I think it's in general, it's the same I have read, that there's not enough study, but um, about uh, small children, uh, not, not adults. But I also have read that it's quite, in, in general, it's quite difficult to study diet, like what is uh, a healthy diet, uh, because a lot of studies are self-reported. That means that the, the, the People in study just say what they eat, but nobody actually can can measure what and how much they eat, and how actually we can know how much and which kind of nutrition we need. But in in the, when we talk about vegan diets and, and research on vegan diets, it's a little bit simpler because veganism is a it's a very clear what you can eat and especially what you can't eat, and so we are not dependent if if we. If we are not that interested in the nutrient intake, but we are more interested in the health outcomes, then I would say that the studies are much more doable. That that you, you have children with parents who are strict vegans, and I'm sure those parents would take care of the fact that their kids also eat a fully vegan diet. And then you have a control population that would be matched for the socioeconomic status and different other things. Uh, eating mixed diets, and and then you would have a follow up, and and you would really concentrate on the health outcomes, uh, the the how their weight is changing, how their height is changed. Uh, you could take blood samples to look at the iron status, vitamin D status, calcium status. You can look at their bones. You can look at their cognitive de development. All these things, those kind of studies, we would we would need. They are not difficult studies. The, the, the biggest challenge, in fact, is to get the number of kids that you would need. Yeah, it's, and it's also kind of not always ethical to, to or, or consider not very ethical to do a lot of studies on children because... Because taking blood sample can be painful and you actually should um, do this study for 50 years to have good outcomes. <laughs> <laughs> so, But even not, the first four years would... Would give Sometimes us some better picture. A little bit, yes. So, David, you had a comment? Uh, no, I agree with basically everything Michael has said so far. Um, I would like to raise one um, uh, point, and uh, that is uh, I agree that there are uh, few studies, more studies need to be done, but uh, it's not the case that there aren't any studies. There are studies uh, both on uh, children and uh, adults, and if we are going to make a recommendation, like um, my, my colleague here did uh, in her introduction, that you should tell people it's dangerous, you have to have some scientific base. And uh, the greatest review of all the science done on vegetarian and vegan diets was done just recently, six months ago, 
and it was by the largest, uh, most prominent uh, professional organization of uh, dietitians and nutritionists in the world. They're called the Academy of Di uh, Dietet um, <laughs> Academy of Nutrition and Dietetics. Uh, they uh, published a position statement on vegetarian and vegan diets. And uh, their position as an organization is, <clears throat> without any question, that a vegan, a properly planned vegan diet is nutritionally adequate in all stages of life, period. And that includes pregnancy, lactation, infancy, the elderly. That is what the, the summary of all the evidence available today shows. And I think as physicians, as doctors, we need to let our recommendations reflect on the current evidence if new studies shows differently, well, of course, then we have to change our recommendations. But today, I would definitely never um, advise a parent against a vegan diet. It's uh, probably uh, also a healthy uh, option since it will create a healthier uh, food habit later in life. The child will, when, when it becomes an adolescent and, and uh, adult, most likely eat more fruits, more vegetables, more whole grains, and um, have lesser risk of chronic disease. Yes, I, I agree with you. Uh, but I would like to add that the, the nutrition recommendation of Estonian pediatricians uh, are based on uh, the guidelines of European uh, Society for Pediatric Gastroenterology, Hepatology and Nutrition Committee. And um, last paper uh, was published in January 2017 on the complementary feeding. And... Uh, oh, oh, oh. It's raining now. Come closer. Yeah, come closer. <laughs> There's plenty of room here. So I think we can continue. Yes, and I will. Uh, I will read an extract from this paper. Vegan diets have generally been discouraged. Also, theoretically, a vegan diet can meet nutrient requirements when mother and infant follow medical and dietary advice regarding supplementation. The risk of failing to follow advice are severe, including irreversible cognitive damage from vitamin B deficiency. And um, if a parent chooses to be an infant on a vegan diet, this should be done under regular medical and expert dietetic supervision. And mothers should receive and follow nutrition advice. Mothers who are consuming a vegan diet need to ensure an adequate nutrient supply, especially for vitamin B12, B2, A and D during pregnancy and lactation. Careful attention is required to provide the infant with sufficient vitamin B12. Uh, uh, 0.4 uh, micrograms day from birth and uh, 0.9 micrograms day from six months. It is very important, I think. Yeah. 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 That's if if you just forget the beginning where they say it should be disencouraged, then I think it makes sense yeah. uh, because the the there are clear risks uh, during the fetal time, uh, especially the first year of life and maybe up to three four years of life. And the the problem here is that the the, the risk. I don't think the risks are risks are so much related to energy intake. It's easy to get that high enough. And for many children, in fact, it's good that they don't get too much energy. Most of us get too much. And, and for the protein also, in fact, uh, uh, too much protein in the early phase of life will increase the susceptibility to obesity later on. The micronutrients are the critical point here. Iron, vitamin D, calcium, 
uh, mm. iodine, maybe maybe those are the most most critical. The problem is that for for an adult, if you don't receive it adequate intake of those, it's not that bad. I mean, you have a marginal deficiency. It's not that bad. During the the, the, the developing phase of a young kid, if you don't receive adequate amount of micronutrients, you may have mental retardation or very, very severe consequences. So that's the only point. You need to be very, very clear, very sure that the nutrient status of the mother and the child is good. Then then it's okay. And then it's the, the parent the parent has to has to measure that how big a risk he or she is a, is a will will take in this because there are clear risks. If we d deny that, then that's bad. But if they are tolerated and if they are handled as they can be handled, then uh, as as David said, then then it, it will lead to a diet which is one of the really good diets here for adulthood. Mm -hmm. So Carmen, yeah. yes, a family doctor. <laughs> yes, uh, well, um, David already mentioned this conclusion that um, vegan diet is appropriate for her, uh, all stages of life, but it should be planned. It should be really carefully planned. Uh, many people in Estonia, uh, they think that they want to live natural uh, life without any violence and uh, in many occasions this is the reason to become uh, vegan. And the natural life uh, means to them that they don't give vaccines and they don't give any pills or tablets including nutrition like uh, food supplements. And um, I think this is one of the biggest risks in Estonia. So, so to be natural, because it's actually not possible to be naturally vegan. Um, you have to take some food supplements. Plus, you have to consume foods which have not been grown here in our nature. You have to get them from far away. Uh, or do am I wrong? Okay, okay. So you have to get them from far, far away countries, um, which includes sometimes um, they, the fruits have been picked too early, sometimes uh, pesticides have been used, and so on and so on. Of course, you can always count on like ecological organic things, but um, it's quite expensive. Um, and so I think these are the m most important problems of uh, vegans in Estonia. Um, yes, um, I uh, um, agree with uh, what Michael said earlier. Um, also, find it very odd uh, the recommendation from the Pediatric Society. Um, I think they should review this uh, recommendation. Uh, if you if you advise against, you, you have to show what what is the evidence. What is what, where what scientific studies have shown this risk? And if you can't produce it, you you have to be honest and say, well, we don't have any scientific evidence to advise against this. Um, I think it's I can't answer how the process have gone, but something has apparently gone wrong. Uh, the the rest I agree fully, uh, but it doesn't only apply to vegans or vegetarians or. Whatever your diet is, you need supervision during uh, during um, um, pregnancy, lactation, um, and um, the vitamins mentioned apart from B12 is a problem not only for vegans. Every other woman who is pregnant receives uh, iron uh, tablets, even if, no matter how me much meat she eats. And the same with vitamin D. Every child in uh, Sweden, no matter how they eat, is, uh, is coerced to take uh, D vitamin uh, oil. So uh, um, I think uh, a vegan, it's, a, it's an important point that uh, you have to plan the diet, but it's uh, wrong to say that you need a lot of knowledge, that you, you need knowledge, but you don't need a lot of knowledge. The knowledge you need, you can fit small print on a credit card. It's not rocket science, it's uh, food. And just like one or two tablets you need, it's, um, it's really no big problem. But there is a risk, even though you need a little knowledge, there is a risk that parents uh, don't get this little knowledge and a child 
um, gets hurt, gets a deficiency. And I think we as a society, as physicians, have to do everything we can to avoid this. But the way to go is not to, to um, advise against vegan diet, because it's a healthy diet, it's an ethical diet, it's an environmental diet. It's a diet that has so many benefits for the whole of society. So I think we should encourage it and look at what are the risks and we can address the risks and, uh, and solve all the problems. I have a question to David. You said that there is only a little of knowledge necessary for being a vegan. Well, I have been reading books like this and I still don't know how to be a vegan. Uh, well, of course, I haven't tried enough too, but, um, but um, do you want to tell that we could uh, exclude meat poultry, milk, and everything from our di diet, then take this knowledge on this credit card size card and a handful of pills. Is it vegan diet? You mentioned the tablets are pills. Yes. yes. So uh, knowledge on, on like four words on credit card size card and, and then a handful of pills. Is it vegan diet? Actually, I don't think it is. Uh, it is. You, you really have to know where you get your iron or, or your other vitamins. Um, and I even don't um, think that uh, it's uh, obligatory only for vegans, but also for omnivores. Every, everyone should eat more, as you have mentioned already, that we actually should eat more plants. We eat too much poultry and meat. But I don't think uh, to be a, a vegan is a very simple thing. You have to learn a lot of things. This is my opinion and my experience. Yes, uh, I can comment on that because mm -hmm. uh, I have been vegan a bit more than six months and at the beginning I also thought that it's like really kind of science. But as David said, it's actually not that difficult. And I also want to just point um, that there in that basket, there's a leaflet which kind of says everything about vegan diet. So if you study that leaflet, I think I have read that <laughs> thing. It's, it's, it's not uh, that difficult. Um, I don't know. Uh, do you want to? I, 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 have, I, I, I have a question too. And um, uh, how to support them for vegan children? How, how often they um, do visit the doctors and uh, do the blood tests? What in your country? Um, well, we don't make any difference uh, if a parent is vegan or not, but uh, the, I mean, the healthcare system in Sweden is quite well built. In, um, you're in pregnancy, the last two months you meet a midwife every second week. So there's quite ample time and opportunity to discuss diets. And also after you go to the children's um, um, polyclinics, um, basically once a month for three months um, and um, uh, the, a few days after after um, um, the um, um, what's the word <laughs> when the children comes up, the birth <laughs> <laughs> then uh, um, they, they make a house call uh, like a few days later so but uh, even even if you have less I, I think it's important. I can't say uh, uh, I, I, it, within. I can only speak for Sweden, and uh, I can definitely say that within uh, within a, um, a follow-up system of this magnitude, uh, fitting into uh, this information you need as a vegan um, is is definitely is no problem at all. So I understand you don't have any kind of specific recommendation or how often to like vegan um, pregnant woman need some I don't know blood test or how often vegans should do a blood test or how often like vegan children should do blood test or have maybe often um, visit to doctor's place. No. no, it's the same, same as, uh, but it's very for uh, pregnant women and, and it's, it's very tight uh, schedule, so no, it's not interesting. But do you follow up the children, I mean all children then also for vitamin D um, or um, B12 levels in blood? Do you regularly follow up, my, I mean? No. No, it's um, and uh, you, every child is given uh, or every parent is given like a flask vitamin D, 
and uh, the, the nurse tells them, you give this five drops every day. And uh, no matter if you're vegan or not vegan, it's, it's ba basically up to the parent. The same is done here. And, but some parents say it's not natural. It cause, causes health problems and they don't give it to children. But it doesn't uh, mean always it's not only vegans, but al also the other. Um, so, yeah, it, it's good that um, you brought up this uh, vegan and, and doctor's relationship or vegan and healthcare worker's relationship because uh, based on what I have read in, in Estonian media, I, I could say that Estonian doctors are quite uh, negatively minded towards uh, veganism. And um, uh, I don't, personally, I don't think it's, uh, it's, it's, it's a very good thing. Uh, because uh, trust and, and also kind of uh, acknowledgement of people's choices are kind of the base of patient-doctor relationship and if we don't have the trust then um, it can be potentially dangerous. If, if, for example, if a children, ch child has um, kind of an um, emergency or some health problem and then the vegan family doesn't trust their family doctor and doesn't go to doctors, um, so um, I, I, as a family doctor, I see that actually there's like a different opinions among doctors. But how could we even more kind of raise, uh, um, make the kind of connection between vegans and doctors more human or <laughs> kind of uh, make the um, partnership better or how can we make them more in to understand each other? I think actually it's uh, not very based on vegan. For example, if you go to a doctor and you have lung problems, oh, you smoke, why do you smoke? Quit smoking, and then the doctor goes out to smoke, maybe. So, <laughs> so uh, I think it's um, quite a um, person-based problem, because our doctors, uh, maybe, I don't know, you're a younger doctor, have you been uh, teached ethics, uh, how to behave with patient? You know how patient feels? And when he's ill, you know, okay, I, I also know, but from my personal op uh, experience, we were not taught, uh, taught ethics, um, uh, ability to communicate in, uh, in university. Well, so it, um, at least um, if you're not a very young doctor, then it, it depends on person, how smooth you are with communication, how do you accept, how do you tolerate differences between patients? Some patient, um, uh, well, uh, uh, for example, I have learned that uh, if I want to a patient um, to prescribe a medicine, for example, for bl high blood pressure, then I always ask, will you start taking it? Because if he says at, uh, at once, I won't, then I just will not prescribe. It's his decision, it's his health, and I have to accompany. And I think it's the same with uh, vegans or omnivores or carnivores or whoever uh, we just have to accept and as doctors we have to learn accepting the patients as they are and their mm, decisions so how is it in sweden or finland how doctors are how is the doctor's attitude towards vegan diet yeah i'm i have i have no idea Pro probably uh, I think that many doctors are not very knowledgeable about nutrition. Mm, that's exactly probably very. That's probably a very kind of a normal thing in any country, mm -hmm. and and so they may have a prejudice for for vegan diets, so or they think it's it's even more risky than it really is. Um, what I wanted to say here, in fact, is that we need to think a little bit about the when when a vegan person or any any say pregnant mother meets meets the doctor, is the vegan diet something that we encourage? I don't think it's something that, that needs to be encouraged, which is different from understood. I think it's a diet that should be understood. And if somebody is a vegan diet, we need to support that. Not say that it's not tolerated. But but for somebody who, who's an omnivore, I would I would if I would be a medical doctor and, and I have a pregnant omnivore mother, I would never encourage her to, at that moment, to take over a vegan diet. Of course, these these things, it, it doesn't mean that that, that then that we, one doesn't understand or 
tolerate, but what do we recommend and what do we accept and support? They're a little bit different things. Um, uh, in Sweden, uh, it's uh, basically the same. I, I don't think it's. Um, I don't think the priority number one should uh, should only be uh, knowledge on vegan diet, but diet overall. Uh, the knowledge on diet uh, and uh, health effects of different diets is extremely low among physicians all over the world. During medical school, you receive only a few hours of training in this, and if you if you're ignorant on nutrition overall, you're of course uh, ignorant on vegan nutrition, and you are apt to be prejudiced and uh, and give. Um, um, uh, statements to your patients that doesn't have any any scientific base and I, I find this is a problem but it, it, do, it doesn't only apply to vegan diet and I'm myself a vegan have been for 10 years and uh, I have uh, personally in my view uh, I have a great confidence in the health benefits of a vegan diet uh, for certain diseases I, I think there is today fair to strong evidence that you get a stronger health benefits if you go vegan rather than just eating a little more fruits and vegetables. However, I, um, I, I would not either, I do not encourage patients to, to go vegan because um, um, the evidence, you have to look at the evidence base and for the Nordic nutrition recommendations to take these first steps, that is where you have the strongest evidence. And uh, as physicians, we should always look at the strongest evidence. The, this, the, the fewer steps are, uh, you, you, you have fewer studies, and therefore I, I do not say to a patient, I, I am, <laughs> it's, it's uh, scientifically proven that vegan diet is best. I would never say that, and I hope uh, no other physician says that either. However, uh, especially when it comes to cardiovascular disease, I think that every patient should have the information that completely plant-based diet is the only uh, diet that's, that have shown reversal of cardiovascular disease. And uh, this isn't about telling a patient what to eat. It's about giving knowledge, and then the patient can do what, them, what they want with this knowledge. So, um, I see one hand there. Uh, Patrick, where are you? Microphone. <laughs> there. So, Gabi, what is your question? Hello, hello. I've really enjoyed this debate and, and I agree with, with much of what's been said. By background, I'm also a doctor and now more in, in public health and, and research. And I completely agree that it's been understated the amount of, of, of risk or harm that the current diet in Estonia or any of the European countries really brings. I think if you can make diets healthier, you will save more lives than if you eradicate tobacco and alcohol. So it's a really, it's a really the, big, the biggest thing by far. And I think to date we've really focused on this sort of two, two sides. You've got vegans versus omnivores. And there's a big line in between the two, which is natural. Because if you take an ethical perspective, you either have to you know, kill animals or, or you don't. You can't just kill some animals. Nobody can f choose to be a, a semi-vegan for ethical reasons. But I think in the health question, if you take the average Estonian diet, and if you tell that person, look, uh, your meat intake now reduced by 50%, and your vegetable intake increased by 50%, I don't think a single scientist or a single doctor in Estonia will, will say, I don't agree. 100% consensus, and that would be a really nice kind of transition step, or just to get the omnivore community more on board with this notion that vegetables are actually very, very healthy. And then, you know, later on we can talk about going from this this increased vegetable intake to a full vegan intake, uh, you know, which is a little bit more tricky sometimes, but actually very easy to pull off if you have the right information. But for the first step, I think it's 100% consensus, no, no debate. The science always supports for, for heart disease, for cancer, more vegetables, less meat is always better. So don't forget the omnivore community also having that debate, which is also having big effects because the vegan community is still quite small in percentage terms. Yeah, that was a very good comment. Thank, thank you for that. Because in, in fact, when we look at the, the nutrition recommendations, in fact, the target group is the whole population. It's not the, the amount of individuals who would be interested in vegan diets. It's the whole population. And for most of the population, it will be totally out of questions to even think about vegan diets. It would be the same thing as we would recommend 
everybody who's sedentary that, okay, start running a marathon. The nutrition recommendations in, in Nordic countries accept a vegan diet, and, and it's clearly stated that particularly for adult people, it's one option for a good diet. But the general message is not go vegan. The main message is reduce consumption of, of meat, reduce consumption of sugar and salt, and increase consumption of all fiber-rich products, whole grains, fruit, veggies, whatever, and change your fat quality towards vegetarian fats. And that's, that's kind of a general general view. The, your comment on the ethics is quite interesting because there are, there are three reasons why, why people could think about vegan diets. I will now take them, although you said we shouldn't talk about the reasons, but I think it's important. Health, and, and, and for health you can get facts. Environmental issues, carbon emissions, land use, all these. For those you can also have, have a, a quantitative results. Ethics is difficult. Moral issues are very difficult. That you said that, that, okay, you can't just kill a little bit of animals. That if you think that it's wrong to kill animals, that's fine. Uh, it's, it's, it's clear. But you can also have other kind of moral approaches to this. Maybe you think it's okay to kill animals, but it's not okay to treat them badly. And that's also a moral issue. So you said that, that you can't have other, you, you can have other moral approaches. And so eating less meat, eating organically produced meat could be a more, it could be morally, uh, uh, it could be a moral decision. So not only vegan diets. So um, there's another question. So let's take that one and... Uh, it's very good that you brought up the question of nutrition recommendation. We will go soon to that part, but first question. Yeah, so just a follow-up question to that, I think. <clears throat> um, I, I guess I'm an omnivore, but uh, <laughs> um, I'm not clear about on a vegan diet. Um, if we look at, say, food innovation is coming down the track. Like in, the, in California, there's, a, uh, there's an innovation where we'll get cultured meat. Um, how will that affect veganism, and is that is that an, going to change the way veganism is? And if there are new innovations, how do you, what are the principles by which we decide whether it's, it should be included in the vegan diet or it shouldn't be included in the vegan diet? So that's an interesting question. I think I can only say my opinion. I think if if a person is vegan for ethical reasons. And the meat is kind of laboratory growth, uh, growth in laboratory. I think some vegans maybe start eating meat, but for saying plant-based di diet as it is, I don't think any meat is <laughs> included in that plant-based diet, even uh, even laboratory growth meat, because it has the same uh, kind of uh, constitution of meat, same amino acids and all those kind of things, fats and, and stuff. So, but it's just my my opinion. I don't know. Because I think there are some vegans here. Maybe you want to to state your own opinion on this. <laughs> or David, do you want? No. Okay. So um, um, I'm glad that uh, Mikhail, you you started to talk about nutrition uh, recommendations, um, and uh, this is one thing that it it has been a discussion in Estonia, um, and mainly because in Estonia and um, dietary recommendation, which are based on the Nordic one, um, it's a bit the the part on diet, vegan and vegetarian diet is a bit different, mm. um, and it's not stated as a healthy diet. It's stated as a, a restricted diet, which can lead to to health problems. So, um, Ulla, you you were a part of putting together these recommendations. What are the reasons why in Estonian nutrition recommendation it's the vegetarian part is very vague and has a lot of attitudes and opinions in it. So firstly, uh, Estonian nutrition recommendations uh, based on the Nordic nutrition recommendations and also many other studies from Europe and the United States. It was a long process consisting of many meetings managed by the National Institute for Health Development and uh, there were many 
experts involved in. Yeah. Uh, what does self-restrictive diet mean? <laughs> I, I tried to explain. Uh, if the person is ill and the doctor diagnoses a celiac disease, yeah? and uh, give, uh, gives uh, some advice about diet, which is gluten-free. Uh, this is a diet based on diagnosis. But if the person itself decides to not eat gluten, it is self-restricted diet. <laughs> I, I, I hope it is a uh, self-restrictive uh, diet. Yeah. Mm, but why are there this differences in, 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 in both recommendations, although you say that they based on Nordic ones, but then the vegetarian part is kind of different and some things are not in there. So there's like, it, it seems like Estonian, mm, the panel of experts who put this together, they had this they own attitude and they just kind of projected it into the nutrition recommendation? Uh, honestly, I, uh, <laughs> I didn't participate in this uh, part of <laughs> recommendations. Okay, Actually, but, uh, I asked uh, yeah. from another doctor who participated, uh, who participated there from among uh, uh, family doctors. And she said that uh, actually we didn't uh, consider it very much because we meant the diet for everyone. Uh, the aim was to advise mostly the most part of the uh, population. So they uh, thought that the vegans are such a small part and maybe that's why they... This is why uh, what I understood from uh, that, uh, her words. But if we think that, yeah, we already kind of mentioned that um, doctors usually don't have a lot of uh, knowledge about nutrition, uh, and usually a food recommendation or the dietary recommendation are, are, is the place where the doctors get the knowledge, and if the vegan part isn't in there, can it be a problem? Maybe the doctors didn't have the knowledge. <laughs> so, okay. uh, when uh, when did they accept this recommendation? Uh, the last one are from 2015, and the Nordic is from 2012, I think. So mm -hmm. it's it's already two years been in use. So, so, so you can start <laughs> changing it. No problem, I think. Okay, but um, for, uh, Mikael, you have been uh, involved in both Finnish and and, and Nordic. Um, why are there like a uh, recommendation for each country separately? Why why do we need it or what do you think? Well, um, <laughs> yeah, that that that's of course a good question. Um, in fact, it's it's a very unique process that we even have common Nordic recommendations because in most cases we have countrywide recommendations. There are two different kind of recommendations. First of all, one. One part is the, traditionally is the nutrient-based recommendations, where we talk give recommendations for 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 energy and for fats, protein, carbohydrates, vitamins, minerals. They're the nutrient-based. They have very little relevance to to individual people. You don't understand whether you have thirty-seven percent of fat or thirty-five percent of fat out of your energy. So, but 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 they are needed for follow-up of the population nutrition and maybe for policy reasons, uh, food policies and health policies, they are important. Then we have the food-based dietary guidelines. And, and, and the food-based dietary guidelines are, are, are related. Any questions from the... the no, we have dogs here. I think they want to say... <laughs> yeah, yeah, they, they want to participate. That's fine. Uh, so we have the food-based dietary guidelines that, that really where we talk about meat and, and sugar and, and all, all, all these things. Um, we could go on, especially the nutrient-based recommendations could be done for much larger areas. They are partly culturally based because nutrients don't react independently. So they, 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 they are needed in relation to each other. So if, let's say, we have a country where meat intake is very low or protein intake is very low, 
then we may have some nutrients that are needed in different amounts compared to other, other countries. Also, vitamin D is a good example. If you go somewhere south where you have more sun, then you need less vitamin, you perhaps need less vitamin D, and so on and so forth. So there are basic uh, reasons why they are, are made country-wise. Country but of course, in, in and around Nordic and Baltic countries, they should be very close to each other. There are no big reasons why they should be very, very different. Uh, and should vegan diet be included in this nutrition recommendation? Well, the, the basic point, again, as you said, that, that the, the diet recommendations are for the general population, so that the, the main picture and the main message is not uh, a vegan diet. It, it's, it can never be a vegan diet because it's so far away what people are doing now. So that's not the main message. But it's very important then to go into the nutrition recommendation and see, for instance, what do they say about vegan diets and vegetarian diets? Are they a good alternative? Are they one option to reach the dietary recommendations out of the, the mainstream recommendation? And I would say that the, the Nordic nutrition recommendation accept and really fully, fully agrees that even a vegan diet can be very healthy and it's a very ecological, uh, it's, it's probably the most ecological choice out of all diet. I slightly disagree for the, with, the, with, with the general picture. I don't think there's very evident, much evidence that the vegan diet is better than, for instance, a Mediter Mediterranean type of diet. But it's one option of having a good and healthy diet. The Swedish um, um, health... Uh, uh, Livsmedelsverket, the governmental agency for food and nutrition, uh, have, have started to adapt. So if you go on their website, during these years that have passed, you, you are finding more and more information on vegetarian and vegan diets. And in my view, the tone is also becoming gradually more positive. And um, uh, and I think when, when it's time to update uh, the... Nutrition, the Nordic recommendations. I, I would, uh, I would guess that a similar approach is needed. You, you, if uh, you have one percent of the population, surely you can ignore them. But not ten percent or twenty percent. Then, and then you can, you, you can't either say that it's, a, it's an unrealistic goal. Then uh, you, uh, <laughs> then it becomes a realistic goal. Uh, Yes, I hope. Um, also, um, I do, don't know if we actually disagree. I, I am um, on if, um, but maybe we do. On I, I have have a, a view that there is there is evidence. It's not strong evidence, but there is evidence today that for some diseases, especially cardiovascular disease, you have st studies today showing a superior effect than you have on a Mediterranean diet. Definitely. Um, but uh, not uh, every disease, certainly. No, and the question is, is what is the evidence from those studies? Have they compared these and so on? So, and uh, I was more talking about the, the, pub, the nutrition recommendations are, in fact, not based on, on treatment of diseases. And, and uh, they are based on prevention of diseases. And in, especially in prevention of diseases, I don't think we have any, any evidence that the vegan diet would be better than a diet that includes just a little bit of meat. So you, you can have meat or you can leave, the, leave it out. It's, it, it has no relevance to health. It's the same thing with sugar. People think, oh, sugar is very bad, but you can have a 50 grams sugar per day in your diet and no problems. If you have 100 grams, 150 grams, then you have problems. It's the same thing with meat. You can have a little bit of meat from a health viewpoint. Uh, if, if you like to, to eat meat every two weeks, that's fine. Your health doesn't understand that it takes this this little amount. Too much meat. We eat, by the way, in our countries in Estonia and Finland, all Nordic countries, far too 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 much meat. So it's really, um, it's a it's. I would say it's it's kind of high fidelity issue to talk about whether you should eat zero or fifty gram meat meat per day. It's much more important to concentrate on on those who eat one kilo per me per week. And, and, and for those, it will be a health reason to reduce meat intake and also, again, an environmental reason 
to reduce meat intake. And I think that the the Nordic recommendations have been the I think the first official recommendations worldwide, governmentally launched recommendations that has specified that meat intake should be reduced. Americans try to do that. They try to do it for the 2015 recommendation in the draft phase they had a reduction of meat intake. In the final phase, that disappeared. So, uh, sorry, David, I will just, yeah, because I knew that also, and I read about it, and I just wanted to ask, because it's it's very known that in the U.S., uh, food industry is very into influencing the dietary recommendation, and, and, and usually there are some very weird things about that, because there was some, some years ago that they had the recommendation that everybody should drink two glasses or three glasses of milk a day, which was uh, kind of pushed by the um, dairy in industry. How is it now? Is it um, for Nordic nutrition person? Yeah. For the Nordic nutrition recommendation, I, I have been involved in 2004 and, and, and two, 2000 or 20, 2012 recommendations. And in both working groups, we have totally no connections to the industry. Absolutely no connection. All the experts that participate, we also check there whether they have any conflict of interest with the with the food industry. It's purely or almost purely based on science with health as outcome. For the previous issue, we also took a little bit of the approach to, to have some kind of a problems or some, some kind of outcome related to the environmental issue. But the main viewpoint still is human health. Okay, David, you wanted to comment? Uh, yes, just a short comment on the question. It's a very interesting question. Where, if you if you um, uh, if you slowly, if you will, or if you gradually change your diet uh, towards more whole plant foods, uh, where where do you draw the line when when the uh, disease risk um, uh, doesn't drop? anymore is it uh, 80 90 95 no one can say of course so i do not say that there is evidence that 100 percent whole food plant-based is definitely best and little meat then you everything is ruined intuitively i would i normally say to people who can't stop eating animal products that just intuitively i wouldn't say that i would suspect uh, a health risk of adding one fish uh, a few times a week or a small glass of um, diet milk it's uh, there, there's nothing no, no science talking of uh, alluding that this would in any way make it worse uh, but i think you should still uh, address this gray scale that uh, the science points at uh, the um, uh, Nordic recommendations has an upper limit of red meat and uh, processed meat of 500 grams a day. And this is at least definitely uh, a consumption level that increases the risk of colorectal cancer compared to not eating meat at all. So um, I'm, I'm fine with the Nordic recommendations. I, I, I don't strongly feel that they should change them. But uh, I think also this information should be given that there is science today. There are quite a lot of studies um, that, that also um, paints a picture of people already following the guidelines and going further. And uh, the health benefits seems to continue. Um, so we have a question somewhere. Um, yep, there. Or a comment. Yeah, uh, I have a question about the Estonian document. Uh, the term self-restricted diet, it sounds bad, it's like self-hurting or something. <laughs> but is it actually a negative term? I mean, if I hear that I should eat less pota potato chips or less sugar, uh, is, is that also considered a uh, self-restricted diet? And if it is, is there actually a, like a basic difference in these recommendations then? Or exactly the same. So um, I also kind of, when I read it, I, I kind of tried to understand what they mean because there was like a definition. So I understood that self-restricted diet is, uh, is a diet where you leave out something because you want. 
for example, or whatever reasons you have, for example, if I decide I, I don't want to eat uh, um, beef and I leave it out from my diet, it's automatically a restricted diet. I don't know if it's okay. It's, it's in that you agree. So I don't know if you have heard of this kind of uh, term. No, but diet. That, 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 I, I like that comment because there are different kind of self-restricted diets. If you leave your sugar out, that's a self-restricted diet, but nobody would probably blame you. If you leave your potato chips out, that's also a self-restricted diet, and, and still people would be happy. And so, yeah, that's, um, I think that's a term that doesn't mean anything from health viewpoint. Per se. It's also not per negative, se. I think. Yeah. It, it's not a negative term. But if, if nobody kind of, everybody agrees that it's not negative or a lot of people don't understand what it means. Why do we need that term, or why do we have it in our simulation? <laughs> Maybe it's just some uh, a way to. Well, I'm supposing you know, a way to express a, a self-restrictive diet, or something like like that. Mm -hmm. Yes. So it's it's then a category that we should when Estonia is planning to do next. A dietary recommendation, maybe we should take that term out. <laughs> it, it depends again on how many vegans we will have. Well, um, I like actually the way how um, the vegans in Estonia and the Estonian Society of Vegans have um, been presenting everything last year because, as doctors, we are very worried be uh, because, uh, as I mentioned already before, with veganism, uh, there very often goes uh, uh, go other self-restrictive things like no vaccination, uh, no, I don't know, unnatural clothes for my children, uh, the children should go only barefoot or whatever, whatever. Actually, there are vegans and I know who actually even don't give breast milk to the children because it's kind of animal product. So uh, so uh, it's uh, it can be very, very um, uh, extreme. And we have uh, noticed that many people who are extreme, they have many extreme things, and one of them is vegan. And um, if we think where we come from, from Soviet Union, then um, actually there were no vegans. There were vegans, but they didn't call them as vegans because there was no term in at that time. And... Um, and uh, no one had knowledge about it, not the normal population, nor doctors. So I think this is just where we come from. But the uh, work vegans are doing now, I, as a bystander, I can say it's very good. I really like your page, vegan.ee. It's very thorough. If you want to become a vegan, there are very, very good advi uh, advice. There is very good advice. So, uh, and also the uh, articles in media are also very good. Uh, I like, they're balanced. And if um, until the vegans' message is a balanced diet, we as doctors are okay. But uh, whenever it starts to uh, go into extremes, for example, if this diet is a purpose of itself, no regarding the health, if, uh, if we actually harm the children and we as doctors say, you are harming your kid, see, the blood test is not okay, it's not gaining weight, it's not de developing, and uh, and still the parents don't uh, do anything. For example, they don't add vitamin D or whatever. Then we have the problems as, doc as a doctor because we are worried. We are not angry. We're not bad people. We don't want to harm patients. But it's our reputation also. We want to uh, our patients to be happy and healthy. I think it's a very good message that as a doctor we, we don't hate our patients. We don't. No, we love them we don't actually. Want them to be harmed and, and, and everything. And we really uh, take uh, our objective is uh, to protect the interests of our patients, especially pediatrici pediatricians who see the little helpless creatures, people, small, very nice. And, and they see how parents sometimes actually destroy the future of that kid. And that's very painful to see. That's why I am never going to be a pediatrician. Mm -hmm. I'm not able to. Okay, but uh, you were talking about the people who go in extremes. But if, if we think that we have less than 1% of vegans and, and even less children that are vegans, 
and we see a lot of people who are going to extremes that are not vegans. Why are we just kind of pointing out at vegans and say like you are bad? But we have yeah, a lot of a lot of parents that um, who have malnutrition children who are not vegans. And yeah, but I don't think we are uh, so much pointing out. I think this is what vegans hear. Um, well, of course, sometimes. Uh, uh, sometimes you see from media also articles that uh, express that oh this is because the family is vegan and maybe they are right actually because as I already mentioned we have seen vegans who uh, are very extreme and who actually don't take into account all the same uh, the same advice you are giving on for example on your web page so. Uh, and we, but we see many extreme things. We also talk about vaccination, about nutrition. For example, I personally have have had to give advice not to give too much milk to kids because they only three year old kid and only drinks milk and that's it. So I don't think it's normal actually. Of course, uh, we consider milk healthy to some amounts, but uh, the kids al also need like vegetables, bread, whatever. So um, if if there were anti-vaxxers here, you would ask me, why are we so mean on anti-vaxxers? But we actually, we just try to uh, pass on the knowledge that balance is everything. And actually, our interest is the health and happiness of every one of you. And, uh, and also, um, <clears throat> we also appreciate the knowledge science has given us. Also on vaccines, on nutrition, on also treatment, on everything. This is what the progress it is actually compared to a hundred years ago, for example. I wasn't so much uh, reflecting my own opinion. I was reflecting what is uh, kind of the the picture that the media has uh, kind of uh, painted. Uh, what kind of the things doctors have said on media, and in there you can kind of hear that only vegans are bad, only vegan diet is bad for children, but we have so much, we have an epidemic of obesity in children. We don't talk so many of, uh, so much about that. But David, you, you had a comment. Um, yes, um, I think uh, I think we came a little off topic when we start talking about uh, walking barefoot and, and uh, anti-vaccine. And, and I also think it's slightly prejudiced to start mixing these things together. I'm, I'm sure uh, there are vegans who are against vaccine, but I think there are many more omnivores who are against vaccine. And I can't talk for Estonia, but in Sweden, uh, most vegans are sensible, uh, well-educated people. I hope and it will be like this also in Estonia. I really yes. hope <laughs> it's not like Maybe this it in Estonia. Already, but yes, you are you are working. You vegans are working for this. But yes. but, but but for kids, for small growing kids, it's not enough that most parents are. Everybody, all vegan parents should be right. Yes, and I think uh, that's the importance of, of, uh, of these controls and uh, to have a dialogue with par every parent and also vegan parents, uh, especially. When you have a vegan parent, you need to add a, a few more information. And I think every healthcare practitioner should know what, what to say and also be confident that... Uh, uh, the position statement of the uh, Academy of Diet uh, Nutrition and Dietetics that they, they needn't worry. Maybe they need to worry about other things, uh, but with the, with the right support and the right information, um, the, the child will develop healthy and, nutri and receive nutritional adequate. Uh, we had one question or comment. Yeah. Okay, so I had this question and I wanted to extend the topic that Marta, you already um, had, uh, started uh, about the comparing uh, omnivorous diets and uh, vegan diets among children. And I would like to ask um, uh, the pedi pedi pediatric or, yeah, right, <laughs> pediatric um, to maybe uh, talk about a couple of examples uh, from uh, omnivorous children. Uh, do they have they ever have you ever seen in your practice or have you heard of uh, any um, cases um, of omnivorous children having deficiencies or uh, or um, nutrition related issues and uh, is is the percentage um, of uh, such children is it higher in vegans or is it higher in omnivore omnivorous children? 
that the worms are different uh, because um, uh, because in Estonia there are uh, overweight uh, children about uh, maximum thirty uh, percent. It depends on age of children. Uh, in Estonia, uh, there are no type 2 diabetes in children, um, and uh, obese children uh, don't suffer uh, the same um, deficiency as uh, vegans. Okay, but have, yeah. but like deficiencies, yeah. like vitamin D, why do you recommend vitamin D to yes, omnivorous yes. people uh, if, if they would be they, they good enough without them? Hypertension, maybe, yeah, hypertension, maybe a little, um, no, dyslipidemia, and uh, no diabetes, yeah. But the other nutrition deficiencies, like for example B12, B12 which is uh, kind of... Um, also very common in infants with uh -huh. omnivore omnivores very rare. Very but rare. but this has even been the topic in the media that omnivorous children and babies have vitamin B12 and deficiencies. So this is like con contradictory right now. Yeah. I'm a little confused. A vitamin D deficiencies. No, there have been many articles on vitamin B12 uh, deficiencies on babies as well in Estonia. Actually, uh -huh. in, uh, uh -huh. uh, yes, there have been, but uh, I am sure. Uh, uh, Ulle cannot answer because uh, uh, the symptoms of vitamin B12 deficiency uh, usually are neurological. The child doesn't develop very well, uh, they don't start crawling or walking, so usually these uh, children uh, go to neurologists. And we, uh, as family doctors, we also see such children, also on, in on, omnivores. And of course, we don't deny that uh, uh, our people don't uh, eat healthily. They think that meat and potato is everything. And then they start be becoming like vegetarians or vegans and they re uh, get out this meat. And re only potato remains, you know. So <laughs> this is what I have seen very many times in my practice. Maybe now, uh, in recent years, when this uh, also good information online is avail available, it's a little bit less. But I remember, for example, a 17-year-old girl who uh, decided to become a vegan. And I um, gave her some vegan recipes and uh, told that you have to try them. Uh, if you like them, you can, of course, start. And I'm not going to do these things. I'm going to eat po uh, potato, carrot, and, and so on. And uh, that was it. Of course, uh, fortunately, she uh, she became omnivore again. Maybe now she is a vegan, but hopefully knowledgeable. So, uh, yes, there are a deficiency of iron, of uh, vitamin D, of uh, B12 also in omnivores. But usually it is also because of this uh, not so good diet. Again, and as doctors, we always try to stress out the very, very plant-based. Plus, of course, if you want to eat meat, it's okay also. But, uh, but uh, the reasons of uh, deficiency of vitamin uh, B12 are different. Yes. Re re reduce intake malabsorption and uh, congenital uh, error of uh, transport and uh, absorption of vitamin B12. The same. Uh, yes, it's the same, yeah. Yes. Very uh, many mothers uh, don't take uh, supplements during pregnancy. They don't eat well during pregnancy. And then uh, it also... Yes, I can agree that uh, vegans are maybe more knowledgeable and they eat uh, many times better. But I have also had many vegans who have had these deficiencies uh, in also grown-ups and children. I have seen them and I have treated them with eggs, actually. Yeah, Mika uh, had a comment. <laughs> vitamin, vitamin D is a challenge in the Nordic countries. Mm -hmm. And uh, in most Nordic countries, in Finland and Sweden, we fortify milk products and margarine. Mm -hmm. It's a very strong fortification at the moment, and, and the population intakes in vitamin D for omnivorous individuals 
Uh, it's very good in Finland and Sweden. It's among the best in the world at the moment, in fact. But it's way lower in in Norway, Denmark, uh, a country, two countries which do not fortify. So and and even uh, vegans in Finland because they don't drink milk, they don't don't eat fish. The margarine that they eat, we have two different kind of fortification: D two, which is okay for vegans; D three, which is not okay. D two is absorbed much; it's it's not absorbed as well as D three. Mm-hmm. So it really leads to, to vitamin D as one one problem. Mm-hmm. But coming back to your question, which is interesting, that comparing vegan children and omnivorous children uh, related to dietary health health risk, it's a little tricky because the risk potentiates at mm-hmm. different times of their life. If you talk about the main risks in vegetarian diet or vegan diets, it's during the first years, first three, four years. If they succeed in passing that, then they're fine. Then they have a diet which is very good from health viewpoints, but they have big risk during the early life. Uh, and that's related to micronutrient deficiencies, not to the energy and protein. My, it's, it, it's mostly micronutrients. For omnivorous kids, micronutrient deficiencies are rare. You have to have a very bad diet to get micronutrient deficiencies. Most, most risks are related to, to later obesity, type 2 diabetes, all these chronic diseases. And you don't see them during the first years. You see them when they're 10 or 20. Uh, those risks can, in theory, be corrected. It's difficult, but they can be corrected. If you run into risk with a vegan diet when a child, child is very young, then there are risks which probably can't be corrected. Just have to face that, that there are some risks that are potentially very dangerous, but they are manageable. How many vegan kids have any problems and how many omnivorous kids have any problems? I think much more omnivorous kids have additional problems, but they are different. They are related to obesity and chronic diseases. So in general, I think if the diet is well planned, it's not dangerous in any stage of life. But uh, there is a but. You have to be really careful in children. Again, I would stress it out because we risk with too much, really. And if you are knowledgeable, if you give food supplements and uh, and so on, I have, I think it's okay. But uh, as uh, Dr. Einberg said that. Uh, also, as a mother, I would say that I would like to my child's maybe blood test checked more often or whatever to be so sure uh, that everything is okay. I just want, to, please, sorry, <laughs> I just want to add one di- di- one more dimension here. I think the society is what really helps us be omnivorous right now. Like we have uh, supermarkets everywhere, and we have. Uh, um, like our parents and doctors, they know how to be omnivores, and that's what we're told all the time, so it's much easier. But uh, with vegan, it doesn't mean that it's rocket science or that it's more difficult. It's just that the, 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 like the, the larger percentage of the society just doesn't know much about it, so it doesn't really mean that veganism is much more like, different or more difficult. Yeah, thank really. you, uh, Mina, for the comment. I, I just wanted, like, just to add, I wanted to ask what, what can Estonian doctors then do to support these families? Because if vegans are vegans for ethical reasons, they are not going to change their kind of views just because the doctor doesn't understand If them. they are ethical uh, vegans, uh, I think they, are, uh, they agree to take food supplements. If they are so, so to call naturalists, they will not take the tablets also. That's why I said... Uh, that I treated the vegans with eggs. Those vegans were not, uh, they were didn't agree to take any food supplements because it's tablet, it's pill, it's like very artificial. They wanted to live naturally. So uh, they thought that um, to have some eggs from uh, happy happy hens or chicken, uh, it, would, uh, it would be okay. <laughs> so, and the mother who had a very, um, she had very uh, serious neurological problems and she said that from now on, I once a week or once a month, secretly I add an egg to my family's food. So... I'm sorry, can I just add? Yes, uh, I think... Yeah, yeah. I think it's it, they followed vegan diet. For me, it's vegan. Yeah, but that's it's a vegan diet. The yes. egg, it's it's not vegan anymore. But mm-hmm. it's 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 not relative to it. But I wanted to ask 
is it possible that Estonian children's doctor will start to accept vegan diet? Is it possible? What should we do or what should happen for, for this? We need more <laughs> studies. Need more yes, studies. Need okay. more. Yes, we need more. Uh, then maybe the doctors need the knowledge. Right. Yes, that's that's true. So we have one question comment here. I, I can give you mine. I just had one question. Is there uh, any um, health issues or disease at all uh, with what a person cannot become a vegan or should not? So is there any condition the... for like health condition that kind of uh, excludes vegan diets? Maybe? Uh, I wouldn't say not, but uh, there might be... Uh, uh, issues, uh, for example, I'm a uh, can as was said a cancer doctor, and uh, some uh, uh, cancer patients have sometimes difficulty reaching uh, nutritional or energy adequacy that they lose weight. Uh, I would not specifically say that you can't be a vegan, but uh, extremely healthy diet is sometimes you have to discourage that you shouldn't eat too much vegetables because you'll lose even more weight but then you'll, you you have to cheat with the <laughs> or, uh, processed foods that you add oil and or even even a little sugar or um, uh, to to regain weight but otherwise um, um, I would say not yeah, but for you, you can have vegan foods that are very energy dense, so, so I, don't, I don't think that's, that's really... Maybe that's not still the, the, the main problem. It could be, you could think maybe of severe eating disorders, but I'm not sure about that. So basically I would think that there are no specific reason why a person couldn't follow a vegan diet. No specific health reasons, I mean. So, but how can we then raise the knowledge of our doctors? Uh, David, you are, have an organization which has the aim. What are you doing there? Or how, how are you approaching doctors? Uh, well, um, we are a quite small organization and um, we work basically through social media, Facebook, and uh, we have a homepage where we have uh, uh, like uh, medical news, uh, when, there is, when there are new studies that we find relevant, we publish them with a small um, uh, summary. And um, uh, since we're so small, we don't have so much active uh, outreach, but we are constantly invited uh, to lecture at uh, hospitals and these kind of events and um, spreading the message. But I think uh, um, it shouldn't be up to NGOs. I think uh, more needs to be done from from society, uh, starting with uh, uh, the me medical um, education and also the continuous education for um, specialists. Um, I, I received, uh, as I said, only a few hours of nutritional education during my um, medical studies. And uh, since I'm a specialist, um, I haven't received any. I, I, <laughs> all the knowledge I have, I've uh, uh, done on my own studies and research projects I've been involved with um, but um, I, and I actually think if I would ask my boss I want to go to a nutrition conference he would say no why on earth would you do that you're an oncologist <laughs> I think this needs to change yes so uh, we are slowly um, coming to like this discussion is coming to the to an end. If you have any question, comments, yeah, just start. We we have time until the next discussion, like two hours. So <laughs> no, I, I don't mind <laughs> quite yes. these before that. Okay, so <laughs> so I have a question uh, to come back to this uh, title of our discussion: self-restricted or healthy diet. And uh, regarding the Estonian uh, recommendations, uh, as I understand, uh, they are based on uh, Finnish uh, and Nordic recommendations. And uh, is there this uh, term self-restricted uh, diet in Nordic recommendations? I, honestly, I don't remember. There are 350 pages. And I, I'm not sure whether this is... It's not... My, my, the only answer that I can give you is that it's not the main term that we would use very often. If, if it's there once, okay, I don't remember. 
So I can comment. I kind of checked it. There isn't. And also I googled self-restricted diet. You, you, you don't find any kind of... Um, oh. a, like in English, you don't find any... Um, yeah, any matches on, on that. So that's why it's also for me kind of confusing why we kind of use this term. Then I would like to ask uh, Dr. Rainberg uh, about uh, uh, where uh, was this term uh, taken from and uh, for what reasons uh, was it included in this recommendation? Yeah. Yeah. The restrictive diet uh, is uh, is uh, maybe maybe more. My dear. So I don't know. nobody knows <laughs> is the answer. I think it's maybe the more answer to National Institute of Health Development. Actually, I don't, I don't think it's... Um, I don't know. I don't actually understand why they take it so personally. Because it's just a term. You know what you are. You, if you feel that you're not restricted, it's okay. Uh, because um, if uh, doctors develop guidelines, you even cannot imagine what kind of a work it is. I have been doing that. It, it's uh, You have to read through a huge amount of papers, scientific papers, other guidelines. This is a matter of months work and uh, this is done by at least two committees. Uh, so, uh, and the both of them consist of many experts and the uh, if you just take this one sentence from the whole guidelines, I don't think it's also very, how to say, um, uh, fair, yes, to, towards the doctors who, who developed it. They really have done it in their best um, uh, view. And, and if you think uh, it's uh, only 1% of Estonian population, I don't think the doctors really thought that may, what may vegans feel if we use that diet. So we are sorry if you feel bad, but you know what you are, so don't take it personally. So I think we can kind of uh, continue the discussion afterwards because, yeah, Mikael has to leave soon. So if anyone else has any comments, questions? Yeah, so I think we can agree that it's... Confusing. It's not very fair. Nobody knows why it is there. So maybe we can just, uh, yeah. Uh, you just have, grow yeah. your vegan population, yes. and then you will have your own guidelines from doctors also. So yeah. uh, there's another comment question. Yeah, I also want to say that if uh, if it's such a big deal, if uh, children are uh, properly, if they eat properly, then maybe it is important to. Um, emphasize the part of veganism and vegetarian uh, uh, diet in the uh, guidelines because otherwise people will still be vegan, still be vegetarian, but they don't have the knowledge and, uh, and mostly what, also uh, when you started, I wanted to say that it's all about habits as well. It's, it's not rocket science, but it's about habits. Um, yes, I think it's a matter of development and um, or if, uh, if you have a population where you have no vegans and suddenly you, you are, it's, it's a new and frightening for everyone, even the authorities and the health authorities. Um, and uh, the, I think the first reaction is to, to play it as safe as possible. And uh, we had a similar development in Sweden, um, not quite sure the years, but maybe 15 years ago. The Swedish um, Nutrition Authority, uh, they actually uh, discouraged um, vegan diets for children. And um, um, I, and I, I would say, uh, I, I can't exactly say why they did it then, but it was probably um, the easiest way out. <laughs> if, if we don't, we can either discourage it or we have to spend millions of uh, kroner on educating all these vegans and finding them impossible. It's easier just to say no. And I think there, there's just a theory that it might be the similar process you're going through now, but when the population of vegans rises to the same levels as Sweden, you have three, four, five percent of the population, then I think the health authorities will answer to that and also be more benevolent and um, accepting. Yeah, I agree. I also think it's something to do with the 
um, how society involves and grows, and and this is kind of new thing to 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 Estonia, and it takes time. But I, I agree that we should still kind of give knowledge to our doctors that maybe if if they read that document, they shouldn't be afraid. <laughs> it's something very kind of bad, but there is a very really good information on on the vegan website. So kind of um, just to. So doctors do not be really kind of um, afraid of uh, of vegan patients. And not all doctors need information. Those doctors who are in the university cities, where the the young knowledgeable women are, those do need the much more. Like say, if if you go to 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 Helsinki and you take women between fifteen, yeah, fifteen and thirty five. Probably you come up to 10% of veganism. In general, in Finland, it's about 1%. If you go to Sorankula, which is in the north, north, you probably have 0. 0. 0.0001 vegans there. So it's, 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 so it's, it's very, very different in different cities and among different population groups. And for some doctors in some places, you really should have the the, the information. Um, as my maybe final comment again, com coming back to the uh, to the the age span and the diets and the words disencourage and encourage. I think for adults we can clearly even encourage vegan diet as one good option. For very small children, I would be very afraid of using the words encourage, but I would not use the words disencourage. I would use the words to accept and support. So uh, I just from. read for the first time in my life this uh, nutrition uh, recommendations of Estonia. It actually says that if you exclude everything uh, um, from a plant-based, you are not uh, feeling yourself well. And if you're excluding everything animal-based, you again will have not a good diet. So I don't see any problem here because really vegans have to take s food supplements and uh, you cannot be vegan without a uh, healthy vegan vi without taking food supplements or fortified uh, products this is my message and uh, yes it only says that this is a harmful diet and i think that's the pro i think they should change it, uh, this uh, there is a whole chapter uh, describing different um, um, things that uh, are missing and how to get them so i don't think it's a problem actually okay so yes I hope that uh, the relations between vegans and doctors will become better, better. better yes. And uh, vegan mothers, please trust doctors because it's very important. But I think we also have to work a bit to, to gain their trust. So I don't think it's just one sided. But <laughs> David, your last comment. Okay. Yeah, and I think the, the the previous thing that I said was kind of my my last comment. That really, for young children, we have to realize the risks, and therefore, I would not encourage, but but absolutely not disencourage that seeing seeing what can happen and what will happen if they really pass the first year. So accept and support. And for adults, it's really a pretty good pretty good diet, but but it's not any better than there are many other good dietary choices and uh, maybe one thing uh, which in fact would improve the relationship and this could be my final comment the um, some vegan people sounds like being upper in the moral issues and don't do that because other people will react negatively if you say that my morale is so much higher because I don't accept that animals are killed, you are not, doctors will not accept that or they will, they will then react in, in a negative way. So I think that the, the discussions in both ways, people should think of how to approach uh, different kinds of lifestyles. So I think we all should be kinder to each other and try to understand why and... <laughs> what we are doing uh, so I think the it's a very good message in general
Do you want to say something, David? No, oh, we, uh, we're doing closing remarks. Yeah. Hi. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> well, um, now I would repeat the most important message. If uh, anyone is considering going uh, uh, for a whole food, plant-based diet, vegan diet, make sure you take vitamin B12, It's, uh, mm -hmm. I think. And, um, um, I, yeah. That's, that's yeah, good. and for all the Estonian speaking people here, go on vegan.ee if you want to became, become a vegan and read what they are saying there about uh, eating habits. And also tomorrow, if, if you have some interest, you, you can um, come uh, in Tallinn and, and hear more of David's lectures. Yes. You're very warm welcome. I hope to see all of you tomorrow. It's, I think it's 11 a.m. Yes, at the Bliss Conference Center. It's at, at Mustamete somewhere, but you, you will find this on the internet, so just Google. Yes, and thank you everybody for being here and...